Okay, I want you to do something for me. Think of your last argument with your partner. What was it about? How was it resolved? And did it all feel familiar? Because the truth is most couples find themselves cycling in the exact same conversations and the exact same relationship bumps. They are the pattern Studio 5 relationship contributor Matt Townsend sees over and over again. Have you numbered them? Yes, the there's, bumps, the patterns? there's about five bumps. And then if you don't do those right, you'll have about 50 bumps <laughs> all no, over your body. How many couples really are tripping up on the same things? All of us. Yeah. So literally 90% of couples that divorce have pretty much all five of these bumps. So it's a pretty universal issue. And conflict's normal, so it's okay to have a little conflict. Right. But if you don't learn just a few tools, and mine are not necessarily skills as much as, uh, we teach skills, but there's a paradigm behind it. There's just one thing to watch for in each of the five things, and if you'll watch for it, you're much less inclined to hit the problem. These are five crucial conversation yeah. skills you want every couple to learn. Yep. The first one begins before you even open yeah. your mouth. All conversations will pretty much end how they start. So we suggest have a soft startup, okay? Soften the startup. It's okay to actually complain if you need to complain. Uh -huh. Just don't blame. So if you notice, most of us when we ha end up having a fight, we don't usually start with this soft startup. Like, babe, I really love what you're doing and I really want you to know how much I appreciate you. And there's just this one thing that I really struggle with and, and I just love to see a change That is there. not how it's happening. That's not how it starts. <laughs> it's in my house. See, so that's, notice those are me using I statements. I'm already telling you what I love about you yeah. and there's still a little thing, so I can complain. Right. There's still this thing about the toilet seat uh -huh. and it, you know, it's not gonna end our marriage and if we could just put it down when we're done and raise it when you're using it, I would just feel a lot better. So you're saying how we start that complaint uh -huh. or that conversation is going to affect how it is resolved. Because most of us don't start that way. Most of us immediately, we wait, we wait, we wait. And the then emotion. we say, why did you walk, have uh -huh. the garbage sack uh -huh. five times without okay. taking it out? And then we start blaming. And you yeah. never, and you always, and every single time. <laughs> and the minute you get into these absolutes. And then absolutes, the finger comes out. That's right. Just like Once that. the finger comes out, it's over. <laughs> it's all over. So the irony of that is if we know we need to start it soft, then it changes our demeanor, uh -huh. and then our partner doesn't immediately have to take a defensive position. Right. He can just say, okay, oh, here we go. We're having a conversation, and she's trying hard to soften it, to be soft. Now, okay? one thing that, that um, is exposed immediately in these types of conversations is emotion, oh, right? Always. So how can we contain that emotion in a way that's going to complement that soft start? Number one tool, recognize the emotion. Don't just let the emotion go unrecognized. Okay. Recognize what you're feeling, recognize what they're feeling. As in verbally, you say? You could recognize it out outwardly. So if somebody's sound, sad, or sad and dejected, if they look sad, you could recognize the emotion. You seem sad, Brooke. If you seem happy, I could say, you seem really happy today, Brooke. What does that tell you if I'm recognizing your emotion? That you see me, that you're aware of I'm my I'm paying needs. attention. Yeah. One of the most important keys to validating is to just recognize the emotion. It's also important to recognize the emotion because the number one killer of the conversation will be the emotion. Most relationships relationship fights, most arguments, most of the pain caused is emotional. So if we pay attention to our own emotion and notice the vital signs are going up or our intensity is going up, we're actually more likely to control it if we're watching it. Now could that backfire because let's say I'm feeling annoyed, mm -hmm. not happy but annoyed and my partner says, you seem annoyed. I can see that escalating the emotion. Well now watch, would it be better I guess that I just ignore your annoyed state? Yeah, no, probably not. So the irony is if I say you're, you're angry. Yeah. What's up? And now that's an invitation to tell me what's up. So that's the next step. So once we recognize the emotion, we explore the story. Behind every emotion, there's a story. Every single time someone has an emotion, I guarantee you there's a story behind it. It's, and not just the story of the moment. Uh-uh. It could be a story of the history. So what, if I can just recognize your emotion, you seem angry with me uh -huh. since I got home, what's up? And I invite you to explore it. Now notice, I'm inviting you to explore your story, not my story. Usually when I get uptight and angry, I want to tell my story. The key here is explore their story. Because if I can explore your story when you're angry it will actually lower your emotion because you feel recognized uh -huh. you feel validated and it's gonna give me more information wouldn't it be better that I actually know what your story is before I try to reply to it so I'm gonna let you tell me as much as your story as you can before I go and start sharing my story. so too many couples if I'm reading between the lines you're saying too many couples react and uh -huh. emote before they even have the information right. or the story and once I'm hijacked because you didn't start it soft yeah and I start reacting to the emotion I'm gonna share my story not your story and the minute I start 
suffocating your story, your emotion's gonna go up. And then you're gonna blow up. And then I'm gonna go off. And then I'm gonna blow up. And then, you what know, then you're sleeping on the couch. <laughs> Not like you're speaking from no, the room. That's right. Uh, your next tip is to really uh, attend to their deeper needs, which gets to their backstory a little Behind bit. Behind every story, there's a deeper need. Most of the stuff we fight about is never what we're really talking about. It's never about what you ate. It's never about the toilet seat. It's never about this. It's never about what you did to me. It's never about that. It's usually about basic needs. I don't feel appreciated. I don't feel safe. I don't feel respect from you. I don't feel encouragement. I don't feel dedication. I don't feel like you trust me or I know you don't trust me. Those basic needs are, uh, when you hear someone tell their story, you'll hear those needs come out. So the trick of the trade, pay attention, not so much to all the detail of the story, but pay attention to their feelings, and their, their basic needs. When you get their feelings right, if your husband could just get your hurt and just show you, I get your hurt and I hurt you, and it's about, I guess, what happened yesterday morning when you asked me how you looked in those pants. Mm -hmm. And I didn't say apparently the right thing. <laughs> and I'm sorry, so tell me more about what you're feeling about that and let you just express your pain, which means I have to hold back my story right. and listen to your story. It does take a lot of self-control to it's, handle these conversations. It's probably the, right the hardest thing, but it's also the fastest thing. So once you learn how to do this, you don't need to spend hours doing this. You can very quickly get to their emotion, their story, and their starved stuff. And then you say we can lift the conversation. What you do you mean by that? You can always lift a conversation. Lifting a conversation means before I destroy you with my point of view, I'm going to first build on to your story. I'm going to take everything I agree with, combine it with what you agree with, and I'm going to build onto your story. That I'm going to blend my story with yours. Then I'm going to add my point. And my point might be a little different. And it wasn't, I, I didn't know what to say, and yet you kept saying, tell me how you feel about me in these jeans. And I didn't know how to tell you I didn't like them. I didn't know how to do that. And so I love you, I appreciate you, I accept you, I acknowledge I did it wrong, and I didn't know what to do. So that's my point of view. And another part of this is I need you to be softer on me. If I don't know what to do, I need to be able to say I don't know what to say. And if I could add that side to the story, I can blend my story on top of your story and then share my points on top of that. And hopefully you could then recognize my emotion. Uh -huh. So my emotion is I was confused, I was sad, I was afraid. And then you can listen to my story and then you can build on top of mine. And the goal is over time we build, we build, we build. Weaving in the Matt Townsend, Townsend favorite word, and. And. You said Always that five you, times. Yeah. By the way, and. that is the end. And th that's how you have a real conversation. Recognize, explore, attend, lift. Recognize, explore, attend, lift. So that's what the whole workshop we're doing Saturday is about. That's what real communication is about. Tell us about the workshop. Saturday, the 9th, 9 o'clock in the morning to 3 o'clock. Everybody comes in, we sit down, we spend six straight hours doing nothing but working on how to communicate. And we teach you all of these skills, we'll have you practice them with each other, and we have you guys set rules so you now know from here on out how to do this. You go to realcommunicationworkshop.com, and when you get there, there's a passcode, a code that if you, if you enter in get real, okay. you'll get $50 off of the workshop. Beautiful. Just for you guys. And of course, you're talking about relationships and setting goals in the Matt Townsend fun way, That's right? That's exactly right. We, make we it laugh, we cry. It's better than cats. Love it. You haven't said that in a while. Yeah. Thanks, Matt.